certain behavior that faces a very fundamental fact. It's human behavior that has to be changed. Would you say the name of that organization, that activity? The mob. Think of yourself as a mobster. The Millennium Assessment of Human Behavior, M-A-H-B. Google it. Mob at Stanford.edu. Just M-O-B? M-A-H-B. M-A-H-B, but we pronounce it mob because we like the idea of being mobsters. Uh, you know. Okay. <laughs> And the mission and scope of this organization it is, is? Is to face up to the fact that, that what we need fundamentally is a change in human behavior. We have to say the United States was redesigned, in, in the U.S., was redesigned for in the last hundred years around automobiles, thanks to the oil companies, the car companies, and the rubber companies. The next hundred years, we have to change it back into a country for people and get rid of automobiles. And how do we start doing that? And discuss how you can get people to face that fact and then behave in a manner that will get there. We've had 15 meetings on climate change, Copenhagen being the last one, utter disaster. How many failures is enough to convince people that the fundamental problem is we have an uneducated group of legislators and, and people in the executive trying to run a country? How many people in the Congress do you think know anything about science or environmental science or what we're facing? Almost none. And that's the sort of thing that has to be changed, and that's what the mob wants to start a global discussion. Because we can't, after all, a, 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 a yak farts in uh, Nepal, and the climate changes in Detroit. Uh, it's not something we can all solve. Uh, the U.S. could set a standard and set a model and really start us in the right direction, but we need a global discussion of what people want, how we get it, and how we keep from killing each other. And it's a non-trivial task. So... A positive step you are taking is leading the Millennium Assessment of Human Behavior. The Millennium Assessment of Human Behavior, the mob. We're having, a, for example, a big meeting in August uh, in which the, uh, uh, the Ecological Society of America is going to have a symposium on the mob in which we're bringing in social scientists to talk to ecologists about how you change human behavior, how you get people to face these things, how you get the educational system to face it, and so on. And the human behavior you want is in three areas. One, cut down on the creation of more population. We, what we want to have is maybe 100 million Americans and the United States to continue for a million years, rather than see if we can't stuff it with, a, say, 500 million Americans and have a collapse in 100 years. So that's number one. Right. Number two, stop consuming so much crap. We are the super consumers. That's why we're the most overpopulated nation in the world. And that's going to be an even tougher thing than changing reproductive behavior. And the third thing is to Go. change how we govern ourselves and, and what kind of technologies we use. Do we transport ourselves around uh, by walking, which is one of the reasons I stay at Stanford University is I can walk to work. I have commuted by car. That's terrible. So we want to redesign the country and get a governance system that allows us to live as human beings, not as tools who are only designed to consume. All right. I like the sound, the mission, the goals of the mob. Would you be kind and repeat the URL again? Just, uh, just Google uh, M-A-H-B, M-A-H-B, at stanford.edu, S-T-A-N-F-O-R-D. So it's M-A-H-B, stanford.edu. Uh, and uh, uh, you'll okay. get there. Over the years, until recently, I never focused on your work because I was busy in other areas. But the name Paul R. Ehrlich somehow or another came through the noise. And then I was up at the Academy, the California Academy of Science, and I saw this book, The Dominant Animal. And, and, and that's actually the time I started to focus more, even though I made climate change paintings and all of that. And I found your book. And I find that if you have an acquisitive mind, you know, if you're out there watching this show and you want to enrich your life and get a feeling of the challenges and opportunities we face, this is truly a wonderful book. It's... Uh, a tour de force in clear thinking. And I want to share what you do in that book that I think is valuable. Uh, you give us definitions when we need them, and they are clear. 
And when you define your terms clearly, you eliminate half of people's confusion. The other thing you do wonderfully, and as an educator, you know this, you put things in the right context at the right time for a lot of people to really appreciate. So I strongly recommend the dominant animal to everyone. Anne and I thank you. We use it for the text in the course, uh, Human Evolution and the Environment, which a fair number of Stanford students take. So it's designed basically to fill in what we've been talking about. And I got a big kick when I was reading it uh, about how human and how you're willing to expose your own emotions when you and Anne wrote that you would give almost anything to disprove Darwin's theories. Sure, because scientists live by their reputations. It, that, nice thing about science, it, it, one of the silly things you see these days is people like Steve Schneider attacked as a climate scientist because he was concerned about cooling in 1960 and now he's more concerned about warming. Well, the point is when more data come in, when you, when you solve some of the problems you're tackling, Scientists change their minds, and one of the ways that scientists make reputations is showing that previous ideas yes. were wrong. So yes. if I could show Charlie Darwin was wrong, I would write it up for science tomorrow. Yes, excuse me. I'd like to do one more thing in this interview, and, and I'm getting ready to end now. And I want to mention that Arabella Decker, a woman who has shown her work in about 110 museums, galleries around the world. She's heavy, she's deep. She is producing an art exhibition that starts on November 14th in Half Moon Bay and then travels the world. And when the government of San Mateo County in California discovered that she was putting on the art exhibition environment, they decided to proclaim the same month that the show starts as Environmental Month for the entire coastline. And she, she was kind and invited me to share the platform with her. We're both putting five paintings in. I hope all of you have an opportunity to see Environment. You can find more details about it on my website, www.killen.com. I'm Michael Killen. My guest was Paul R. Ehrlich. And if the tape wasn't up,